next segment is one we've been calling Save the Starfish, which sounds very aquatic, but it's not. Have any of you heard the starfish story before? No. Oh, well, okay, for those of you who haven't. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old parable that often gets usurped and modified to fit the purposes of whoever's telling it, and that's exactly what we've done. We've totally done that. So the story goes that there's a young girl walking down the beach, and she notices that hundreds of starfish have washed upon the shore, and they're dying out and drying. So one by one, she starts picking them up and throwing them back in. And then a man comes up to her. A grown man. A grown-ass man. And he says, what are you doing? There are too many of them. You can't possibly save them all. Why bother? Why even bother, says the grown-ass man who maybe forgot to take his Lexapro that day. And the girl. The little girl. The mighty girl. Well. She picks up a starfish. Undaunted, undeterred. Throws it back in the water, looks at the man and says, it made a difference to that one. It made a difference to that one. <laughs> <laughs> and in some versions of the story. Some usurped versions. Like our version. The man is so touched that he starts helping her. And then other people see what they're doing and they join in. And then eventually, all working together, they save the starfish. They save all the starfish. See, sometimes it can feel like a problem is too big. And maybe you can't save every starfish, but it is definitely worth trying to save some. Because you never know. Those starfish might be the ones to maintain the ecological balance of nature by thinning biological excess, consuming carrion, and directly and indirectly maintaining an essential balance of underwater species. That's just science. <laughs> <laughs> that is just science. The point is, we can all make a difference with the tools, talents, and resources that we already have. And in fact, we're going to show you the story of a woman who's done just that. Take a look. My name is Susanna Spees, and I work with preteens and teens ages 11 to 18, teaching them comedy. The class is part of the Eamon Cannon Comedy Project in dedication to an amazing young comedian and mentor to other young students. We'll start telling some jokes, Mr. Bunny Boy. Stand-up comedy is a great way to express oneself and to share your opinions and to bond with others. That's a language everybody understands and wants to engage in. The name of the game in here, you guys, is to have fun. It's a nurturing environment where they can come together and say it how it is and they won't get in trouble for it. That's good. I want it to get loud. That's the biggest need that I see. Everybody has a voice that deserves to be heard. And it's an honor to provide that opportunity, especially to teens at risk, through our good friends at Inner City Arts who are hosting this program for us. We love the Eamon Cannon Comedy Class. It gives kids a safe space to express themselves, to see their ideas come to life. I was really struck with how similar the, just the focus and the mission of the class was to what our mission here at Inner City Arts is. This program here is fundamental. It's able to ca capture many youths like attention and just distract them from the hustlers, the thugs, the drug dealers, but what are they thinking? They're thinking paint, color, they're thinking music, notes. The value of the program and the value of um, kids getting engaged in this art form, because it is an art form, surpasses what happens when they think they want to be a comedian. You don't have to be a performer or like comedy, you just have to be able to, you have an opportunity to be able to talk about what's on your mind. Yeah. And that's the most important thing. You pick a topic and then like you rant about that. 750. Yeah, you got the lettuce, tomatoes, fries, and <laughs> patty, burger. A lot of those kids brought themselves here and created a set for themselves that was so representative of their voice of their thoughts, of their opinions, of their unique view on the world. I wasn't good enough to get robbed. <laughs> Two dollars wasn't enough for the man who had nothing. It's encouraging them to express themselves through writing. It's 90% writing. The writing is essential. Make things really specific. So like, normal people laugh at it because it's a stereotype. I laugh at it because it's my family. <laughs> That's a great line. You should write that. Write that, write that line. Down. Even though it's a fun comedy class, they really have to utilize those tools that are really critical for schools. When I started taking this class, I like started becoming funnier and funnier. And my English teacher like started to love my essays. So, like my grade went up to like a 97 or That's something. That's so That's awesome. Good. Comedy helps you find your place. You said you had felt weird when you read that. If you would sound more convincing, then the joke would have more like 
Um, the art forms that you develop and you realize that you're good at are really an outlet for all the things that happen have happened to you. So you are who you really are in your art. And the reason I know that a lot of people have the ability to bring it out is because I brought mine out. And with a lot of help from people who love me and support me, I was able to be myself all the time. I'm drawing out who they are through the platform of comedy. So this is like a little thing um, called reveal, reveal yourself. yourself. Where they say two things that are true and one thing that's false. And so then we have to guess what that is. Anything you say is going to be right. I'm going to throw things at you and you're going to tell me how you feel about it. It's really clear that Susanna loves what she does and loves the kids. Very cool. She High just five. gives her heart to them in the form of encouragement. Yeah, you are really funny and we are so glad you're here. In the form of saying yes to their ideas and also guiding them and challenging them and asking the best of them. My heart's full of pepperoni and love. <laughs> the goal in this is not to try to make the next Seinfeld. The goal and the incentive in this is to have this be a vehicle for them to express themselves. Okay. Please welcome to the stage, Susanna Spees. Hello. Hello. Thanks for being our first guest. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> Yay. So obviously we saw through the video, Susanna does stand-up comedy and you teach kids how to make their own sets, so comedy is a big part of your life now. But what was comedy like in your life when you were a kid? Well, when I was in a, you know, I was sort of in a house that there wasn't a whole lot of comedy. Um, I had a very lovely upbringing, but, you know, uh, my dad was a professor, very academic and very smart in school, school, school. And, uh, and my parents, you know, they were from another country, German, Chilean Jews from New Jersey. Anybody? <laughs> um, so uh, I think that the funny really came into sort of like dinners were never, you know, lunch wasn't peanut butter and jelly. It was like soy papillas, empanadas, you know, everything. <laughs> But it was really, um, I, I was kind of shy, and so I created my own comedy as much as I could, whether it was like, you know, salt and pepper shakers were two different characters or <laughs> different Barbie dolls. Um, I really started developing, I love to do character work, and so I sort of started divulging into that, and it wasn't until probably around high school, sophomore year in high school, that I started to really feel like, hey, there's something here, so. And that's the age of the kids that you work with now, right? Yeah. They're, what are their ages again, exactly? Um, they're, they're between 10 and 19. So the average age is, is 13, but it goes all the way up to 19. Up to 19. Yeah. And um, you met Eamon when he was taking classes with you in high school, and he really inspired this program because you saw how much it brought him out. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, I was teaching a stand-up comedy class in Santa Monica, and, um, you know, Eamon, like, like many kids, you know, had a little bit of an aversion to school. Um, <laughs> Wasn't his favorite place to be, um, but the day I started teaching stand-up, uh, he was never late from that day forward for six years. Um, he was a absolutely devoted student, an absolutely incredible writer. He became a mentor to others um, within not only that class, but he became um, a very, very huge significant force within the world of comedy um, from the age of 15 to the age of 20. He was and, and that's part of the program as well, because I know Amita, who we saw on the video, mm -hmm. was part of the program, and now he comes back and he mentors kids mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So starfish is putting more starfish out there. So. Maintaining the ecological balance. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, uh, the Eamon Cannon Comedy Project is currently housed at Inner City Arts, and that is located in the heart of Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles. It is well known for being one of the nation's most effective arts education providers to elementary, middle, and high school students, many of whom live in LA's poorest neighborhoods. And it gives them the tools and skills they need to succeed academically and personally. So can you tell us how long you've been at ICA? Uh, we are going into our sixth year. Six years. Yep. We started in 2008. And um, it's been very exciting. <laughs> you can talk. We can talk. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. It was, it's 
it's really cool. Um, I started there when I was 12, so it's good. Um, uh, no, it, it's been exciting because we, you know, we we started with five kids, and we've gone up. We we we've, we've actually grown up to now. I think we've got 14 in our roster, so we're growing exponentially within the programs that we have there, and it's an incredible facility. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about the actual program? I mean, we saw a little bit on the video. We know that it lasts eight weeks, and that writing is involved, and that stand-up is involved. But tell us a little bit about how. It's um, well, the program is, is actually 90% writing, and they develop their own material based on their own everyday experiences. So it's really, I think it's very important for teens to be able to have that platform. We know that there's a lot of angst. We know that there's a lot of different situations we're in. But, you know, a lot of things we don't know um, that they're experiencing every day. I've had students that have been living in a car or students that are affected by gang violence daily. They need that outlet. And so there's something called no blue, um, and that doesn't mean blue shorts, blue t-shirts. That doesn't mean the color. Um, they have to write and only perform things that are actually rated PG, so things that you can share with your family. Wow. So it culminates into a performance for the community to share in. Um, and it's half improvisation so that they learn you know, their tools with team building and working, and working together. And then the other half is, is actually developing their own material and then performing it after an, a culminating uh, eight-week progress so, pro a program. So they they can share in it and enjoy it. Well, thank you for joining us. We're going to hurry you off the stage because we want to get some money for you. So let's hear it for <laughs> Susanna Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my belt just fell off. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so <laughs> extra. You said no blue. <laughs> Keep it going. 